Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and joining us now by Zoom is the coordinator of the Military Sexual Trauma Department at Veterans Affairs in Tampa. Welcome to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Dr. Amber Hudspeth. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. I'm really glad you can join us. Uh, so tell us, what is Sexual Assault Awareness Month? And in the VA, you're also recognizing Military Sexual Trauma Month. Tell us what those are. So Sexual Assault Awareness Month is um, recognized in the month of April, and it's actually recognized nationally as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So it's not just in the VA, it's actually nationally throughout the country. And it's the month that is dedicated to um, recognizing that sexual assault awareness, sexual assault is still a prevalent problem within our society, both nationally and internationally. So we set aside that month to really focus on prevention and awareness of this problem and the um, sort of awareness that treatment is available, that help is available, that people who experience this are not alone. So often when people experience um, sexual assault, they kind of feel very isolated. They feel like I'm the only person that this is happening to. No one would understand what I'm going through. And so we really dedicate this month to raise awareness that this isn't a problem that people experience in a vacuum by yourself, that there are other people who are experiencing this as well, that there are treatments that are available. There are people who will understand what you've been through so that um, people who have been through it know that we can really help you through that. And so that people recognize that this is still a problem that we need to devote time to preventing, that we can devote resources to preventing, and that there are resources available for both of those things. Our guest is Dr. Amber Hudspeth with the Department of Veterans Affairs in Tampa. She's the coordinator of the Military Sexual Trauma Department, and you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. So Dr. Hudspeth, how common is sexual trauma, including in the military? So we track um, military sexual trauma, the frequency of it through um, what we call um, a clinical reminder. So during um, a person's first visit with the um, Department of Veteran Affairs at, so the, during their first treatment visit at the VA, we ask them whether or not they've experienced military sexual trauma. And we track that frequency of MST that way. And what we find is that the frequency of it is about one in three female people seeking care at the VA and one in 50 male people seeking care at the VA report that they've experienced military sexual trauma, which is actually a pretty startling number if you think about it. But even those numbers we assume are an underrepresentation of the actual rates because those don't quite capture people who might be hesitant about reporting their experiences. It also doesn't capture people who don't really identify what they've experienced as military sexual trauma. And it doesn't capture people who served in the military but are not getting their care at the VA, either because they are seeking care elsewhere or because they don't understand that given their experience of military sexual trauma, they actually would be eligible for care at the VA even if they are not eligible for care otherwise. And so I noticed that um, when we were speaking, um, you had referred to me as the head of the MST department. I'm actually the MST coordinator, which is a little bit different. Um, so I am the MST coordinator, which means I'm the MST subject matter expert for the hospital, and I am in our MST clinic. Um, I'm, but I, there's other people in the clinic. I'm not quite the head of the clinic, but so I just want to make the correction. There are many other great, fantastic people in their clinic, and I am not their boss by any means or shape. <laughs> so, but I am sort of our MST subject matter expert for the facility. I appreciate the clarification there. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Hudspeth. Well, let me ask you about what are some of the difficulties that, that people might experience after sexual trauma and uh, th these could also be signs that their friends could look for? Absolutely. So one of the things to know is that even if people experience military sexual trauma, the vast majority of people actually can recover without necessarily needing um, sort of professional help. So if you are somebody who's experienced it and you've recovered, I don't want you to think that like, oh my gosh, I experienced this. This means I need to go and see somebody. That's not what Sexual Assault Awareness Month is about. So we're not saying that because you experience this, you automatically need to go and be seen by somebody. But if you are struggling, there are lots of different ways that um, sexual assault 
or military sexual trauma affects people. And it's a broad range of things. So for some people, some of the most common things we see are development of things like PTSD or depression. Sometimes it's alcohol and substance use problems, but it can also be things like more health conditions. So things like GI problems or gastrointestinal problems, chronic pain. Sometimes it's things like infertility problems. It can be things like um, problems with um, eating disorders. It can affect people in a lot of different ways. One of the things that I really tell people to look for is noticeable changes in how the person is behaving or acting. That's one of the ways that you can really notice if something is different. So if somebody has distinctly behaving differently than how they were before, that's one of the things that you should really check in with that person and see like, I've noticed that there's been this really distinct change. How are you doing? Is, it, do you, is there anything that you wanna talk about? But if that person says, no, this isn't something that I really wanna talk about, then kind of respect their privacy. But if you notice that they are struggling and you're not sure what to do, there's actually this really great resource, resource that's called Coaching Into Care. It's a VA offered resource that actually is specifically designed for friends and family members that are noticing changes in their people that they care about that actually helps talk with you about how do you talk with a family member or friend that you notice is struggling and you wanna help get them into care and you don't know how. Right, I think as having grown up in a military family, watching the people that I care about struggle is one of the things that got me into the position that I'm in because I wanted to help out. And being on that side and not knowing necessarily how to talk to the people we care about, I love this resource of coaching into care because it actually helps the people that we care about help them get help. And so coaching into care is a really great resource for all of us in our life to be able to help the people we really care about. Our guest is the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Veterans Affairs in Tampa, Dr. Amber Hudspeth, and you're listening to WMNF Tampa's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Dr. Hudspeth, the, some of the factors, what are some of the factors that is that could impact how, how a person responds to sexual trauma, the different difficulties that they might experience? So some of the factors that can influence how somebody um, responds is whether or not they've experienced trauma before this, whether or not um, sort of the type of experience they've had. So military sexual trauma covers a broad range of experiences. So it includes things like sexual harassment. It includes things like attempted sexual assault, and it includes things such as completed sexual assault. So, so the severity of the experience that they had, whether it was repeated, and another thing that really impacts how people um, recover or sort of the difficulties they have after is the support that they had after that experience. All of those factors can really combine to determine sort of what happens, how that person recovers, and also their own sort of skills that they have to deal with emotion. So if they didn't have really great coping skills before something like this happened, the likelihood is, is that this event is not going to magically create good coping skills for them. And so if they didn't have really good coping skills beforehand, this is likely going to be an event that overwhelms the coping skills that they already had. And we may have talked a little bit about some of this already, but what are some people that, what are some things that people can do that can help them to cope with it or to help them recover? One of the things is to reach out for support. Suffering in silence is really difficult. And so if there's somebody in your life that you trust, talk with them. If there isn't someone that you can trust, the VA is a really great place to go for care. We are trauma experts. We have more experience than kind of anybody in the, in the country on dealing with trauma. At the VA, you can get MST related care at any of our clinical locations. So not only at the main facility here in Tampa, but at any of our CBOC locations. So that includes Lakanto, that includes Lakeland, Brooksville, Zephyr Hills, South Hillsboro, Newport Ritchie, all of our clinics have clinicians that are trained to work with um, veterans who have experienced military sexual trauma. 
the VA is really dedicated to working with patients who have experienced sexual trauma, and we are here and willing to help. There are, there's no one path towards recovery for trauma. And so we really offer a wide variety of treatments for people who are wanting to recover. And so there's no one path that people get sort of pigeonholed in. And so talking with people that they care about, they can call me and ask me questions about what care at the VA might be like. And so um, if you want, I can give out my direct line and they can call me and talk to me about what that might be. So my direct line is um, 813-631-2583. They're welcome to call me as the MST coordinator and I can talk to them about what their care options might be. And really think about um, understanding that there is life after this and life can look full of um, joy and laughter and intimacy and closeness and all of those things that feel impossible after this experience can be there again. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It's also Military Sexual Trauma Month. And so we're sp speaking with the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Veterans Affairs in Tampa, Dr. Amber Hudspeth. You're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe. And so Dr. Hudspeth, so far we've been talking about your specialty, which is Veterans Administration, but uh, imagine that I'm sure that some of our audience out there isn't, they aren't all veterans, of course. So um, we might be stretching a little bit beyond your, your expertise, but what would you recommend for someone if they're not a veteran and they're, they're seeking help? Are there things that you know about that people can do? There are. So a lot of great resources in the community. A really great one is NAMI. So it's the National Alliance of Mental Illness.org. They really help connect people in the community with resources that would be available for them in the community. Often also um, looking up sort of um, psychologists or therapists that are um, kind of connected with the American Psychological Association, that is sort of like the governing body for psychologists, that's who does our licensing. And then really looking up and talking with people in their community about um, what are some good resources that are available and kind of talking with people in their community, reaching out and looking at some of those resources would be a good way to go as well. There's also like if people are involved in um, domestic violence, there is the National Domestic Violence Hotline that is available. The website for that is actually hotpeachpages.org. I know it's, the website seems weird, but that is so that if people are looking it up on their computer and they're involved in a domestic violence situation, that is not going to sort of tip off sort of their significant others. So that's another great resource that people can look at if they need something. So those would be some of the resources that I would really encourage people to look at in the community as well. Our guest is the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Veterans Affairs in Tampa, Dr. Amber Hudspeth, and we're, and we're talking about Military Sexual Trauma Month at the VA and also Sexual Assault Awareness Month beyond the veterans. Uh, We've talked about some of the websites where people can seek help, whether they're in the, the Veterans Administration, uh, field of influence or whether they're outside of that. But uh, tell us about what some of the services that you haven't mentioned yet that the VA does offer for people who have uh, experienced military sexual trauma. So for veterans who've experienced military sexual trauma, we at the VA offer a full range of treatment. So that includes both psychotherapy, that includes psychiatry services, that includes full medical care, and all of that, if it's related to their experience of military sexual trauma, is offered at no cost to the veteran. So that includes any sort of um, trauma processing therapy, that includes any type of um, medication that might be related, that includes any type of procedure that they might need, all of that is covered at no cost. And so we really encourage people that and there's no sort of like expiration date on that. So usually with private insurance, you get 10 to 12 sessions over a certain period of time, and that's the amount of care that you get. We don't sort of have those limitations at the VA. So people can sort of be in care to address whatever number of 
sort of aftermath or whatever sort of difficulties they're having for as long as it takes to resolve that issue without sort of those restrictions, which really means you get a broad base round of care. And we really are sort of leaders in the field of psychology, psychotherapy, and psychiatry. We really are sort of offering that broad based care about dealing with not only issues of trauma, but also issues in relationship, communication, sexual intimacy, infertility, it's kind of difficulties with pregnancy, all of those things that can come after having difficulties with military sexual trauma. Some veterans might not be eligible to, re to receive VA care. Uh, you can tell us about why that might be, but even if that's the case, they are still able to get care for military sexual trauma. Is that right? That's true. So even veterans that have other than honorable discharges, and that would then make them ineligible for MS for care at the VA, would still be eligible for care at the VA if they experienced MST. And they're eligible then for care that's related to MST. So say somebody has um, an other than honorable discharge, as long as it's not sort of a criminal discharge, and then they're banned from care at the VA kind of universally, they're eligible for any care that's related to their experience of MST. So say a person had an experience of sexual assault and they receive, and then after that, they started drinking and they started drinking and then they decided they ended up going AWOL. And because of that, they ended up with an administrative dishonorable discharge. So that person would then be eligible for care at the VA for MST related care. So that MST related care would cover psychotherapy, psychiatry, if they're still drinking substance use disorder treatment, if they subsequently dis developed um, cirrhosis of the liver from their drinking that was dealing with the MST, then that would be covered. If they then also during the experience of their MST, they suffered a severe eye injury, then any care that was related to that eye injury would also be covered. So it really is not just sort of this small, it's anything that would reasonably be connected to that experience of MST is covered. And so even if they're not eligible for other types of care, anything that's related to that experience of MST is covered. And so it really is this broad experience of care that they can, that they can have access to based on their experience. Our guest is the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at the Veterans Affairs in Tampa, Dr. Amber Hudspeth. And we're talking about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is April. It's also Military Sexual Trauma Month. You're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. So some people who are victims of sexual trauma might not feel comfortable getting treatment in mixed gender settings. What mm -hmm. options would you have for those people? So we have... Um... At our primary care annex, which is located over on sort of like the cross of Fletcher and 75, we actually have a women's center specifically for our female patients that are hesitant about receiving care in a more mixed gender setting. And that has, um, during non-COVID times, it has a separate entrance that actually is only open for female veterans to come in. And that is a um, sort of a part of the building where only female veterans receive care. Uh, most of our staff there is female as well. So all of our therapists right now, all of our uh, medication providers are female as well. And so we really have created this environment that is very welcoming. It is very sort of um, the options there for care are the same as they can get at any other place in the hospital. So it's not as though that because they're going to this special place, the options are reduced. And then if we have um, male veterans that are hesitant about receiving care in mixed company, we also have some options for scheduling of appointments at different times at our mental health clinic that we can do either early morning or later afternoon when the, appoint when the waiting room is not quite as busy um, so that we have that options as well so that we have some extended time so that we can have that flexibility. We also offer a number of virtual care options so that people 
uh, apart from maybe an initial evaluation, can actually engage in care from the comfort of their own home. So they don't actually even need to come into the appointment unless it's something where they need to come and have an injection or there's a type of treatment that they're doing where they have to actually physically have some sort of apparatus for that care. They don't actually need to come into the clinic. And so that has really opened a lot of care options for a number of people who may be hesitant about coming in or that have really busy work schedules that they can see us on their lunch break, things like that, that have really expanded a lot of those care options for people who may be hesitant about coming in we don't even have some of those issues of the waiting room because you can do it from your home. Dr. Amber Hudspeth is the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Veterans Affairs in Tampa. We're talking about Military Sexual Trauma Month and Sexual Assault Awareness Month on WMNF Tampa's Tuesday Cafe. Dr. Hudspeth, before I let you go, what are are questions that I haven't been able to ask you, but that you that you think that are important for people to know? I think one of the things that um, I would like everyone to know is that all of us here at the VA are really passionate about helping the people that we work with. That all of us are, I don't think any of us at the VA are here by accident. We are all here because we are passionate about working with veterans, that we are all, I think all the clinicians that I work with are excellent at their jobs and really enjoy the work that we do that we are here because we firmly believe in the treatments that we offer, that we enjoy the population that we work with, that we really take value in the things and the people that we work with, and that there is hope, there is treatment, there are things that work, and that we are here to help in any way that we can. Well, I wanna thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Dr. Hudspeth. Thank you for having me so much. Dr. Amber Hudspeth is the Military Sexual Trauma Coordinator at Veterans Affairs in Tampa. And if you missed this interview, you can watch it later this afternoon. It'll be on our website, wmnf.org.